thriving, beautiful capital city of the Lebanon. But even here, in the biblical land of milk and honey, for some, the honey is not so sweet. These are refugees, some of the many who have lost their homes in the Middle East strife. Lebanon has seen its share of troubles through the centuries. Romans, Arabs, the Crusaders, Turks, the French, and the Allied forces all have passed this way. The Lebanon has been a land to fight over, a fact recorded indelibly at the strategic Dog River. But the Lebanon has survived and emerged as a prosperous and democratic state composed equally of Christians and Muslims. The president, Charles Hillou, is a Christian, whilst the prime minister, by agreement, is always a Muslim. The setup appears to work well, and in spite of its geographic position of strategy in the current Middle East situation, the financial comparison of the Lebanon to Switzerland and its role as the trading house of the Middle East is a fair one. Free enterprise flourishes, modern roads cover the country, luxury buildings and hotels have sprung up. One of the main objects of both is tourism. About 30% of the national income is derived from visitors, including Jewish people. Even now, the Lebanon is still a tourist attraction. But this is traditional and universal in appeal. So is this. In this small land, bordered by Israel and Syria, the East and West fuse smoothly. Ancient and modern, Christian and Muslim. It's a land of contrasts. Sunny lowlands, snowy mountains. The Israelis attack Beirut airport, an alleged reprisal against El Fata raid. The government banned demonstrations supporting Arab guerrillas after serious disturbances developed in the streets. Now, all is back to normal. The Lebanese say they have but one aim, for their country to be a land of peace.